I always figure I'm the luckiest guy when I have an opportunity to sit down with a pro football player and just kind of get the inside scoop. Jermaine Copeland is with us. Welcome, Jermaine. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. I've watched you play a lot, but never met you before. And what a what a pleasure that is. You don't look big enough to be a football player, by the way. You look you look uh, like sort of my size. Yeah, I'm not that big actually. TV makes you look a lot bigger. That's true. It does. <laughs> yeah, just remember that, friends, when you look at us and think we're overweight. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, you're about 195, 200 pounds? Yep, 205. And, and, and has that been your playing weight throughout your college and, uh, and professional careers? College, I was a little bit heavier, actually. I was about, um, probably about 215 in college, actually. Um, I was a little bit bigger, hitting the weights a lot more. Yeah. You know, uh, once you start getting older and um, you start understanding the professional game, you start to change a little bit. You start yeah. to back off the weights and just try to stay conditioned. <laughs> right. <laughs> Being big is not necessarily uh, a virtue. By, by the way, speaking about big, and the, we, we have so much to talk about, but let's get right into this. The big controversy right now is helmet to helmet hits. Mm. And you got these guys, some of these linemen are over, well over 300 pounds. Uh, now, you as a receiver, you don't necessarily get tackled by those guys. It's, it's the guys out, you know, the linebackers and, and the, and the, uh, the um, whatever you call them, the safeties the and so on. Yeah. But sometimes they're coming at full speed, you're going to full speed, helmet to helmet, and sometimes both players are lying there unconscious. How do you feel about this thing? Is it a recent thing or has it always been there? It's always been there. You know, uh, concussions has happened ever since football started. You know, uh, helmet to helmet contact is part of this game. It's just like uh, if you look at the stuff that's going on in hockey as well, you know, yeah. it's the same way. Uh, it's just part of this game. It's a violent sport, you know, and uh, that's just stuff that you have to take in whenever you're playing this game. And now that quarterbacks have been getting a lot of concussions, they're starting to make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, you, really can't, you really can't play this game soft. This isn't a game to go out there and try to touch somebody real soft or touch them when they're in the air. Helmet to helmet is going to happen. That's the reason why you got helmets on. And the thing is, you're making split dis uh, split second decisions, right? Yeah, and in a matter of uh, a hot second, you yeah. never know what's going to happen. You yeah. know, so that's just the way the game goes, yeah. and that's the way it's always been. Like for James years. Harrison has uh, been fined several times, plays mm -hmm. for Pittsburgh, and mm -hmm. I mean, I've always considered him to be just a real hard nosed linebacker. Uh, but he's been accused by some of headhunting. Uh, I'm wondering, is he headhunting? Is he just playing his position well? I think he's just playing his game. Yeah. And that's what a lot of guys in the NFL are starting to get upset about is because uh, you're, you're taking all the action and, and the fun that the defensive guys have out of the sports. I mean, that's what they play defense for is to hit people. Hit guys. You yeah. know, they want to be physical. They want to pe yeah. hit people real hard, yeah. actually. So you're taking the fun away from those guys. and. It's actually going to start drawing back from the game. I really think uh, if they keep it up, it's going to be something to turn. Now you're you're a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Now when you're uh, when you're running down the field and your quarterback passes and it's high, and you're jumping up for it, your ribs are exposed and you're off you're off the ground and you know you're going to get nailed. Does it occur to you in that split moment that you're about to get nailed, and does it take away from your concentration on looking the ball into your hands? Uh, for a regular receiver, yeah. Yeah. For me, no. You don't think about it? No. I tell you the truth, I, I, you see the hit coming, you just got to brace yourself. It's yeah. a matter of trying to hang on to the ball. You're going to get hit. Yeah. That's what this game's all about. It's a matter of the big time professionals are the ones that can take the hit and hang on to the ball. The guys who end up going home are the ones who get scared and let the ball go. You know, one of, one of the smaller receivers that uh, just absolutely amazes me is, is it Wes Welker? Yeah. No I mean, is. does that guy ever drop the ball? No, it doesn't look like I it. I mean, he's just, he's just a little guy, <laughs> but he, he, he catches everything in all kinds of adversity. Uh, is, is that focus? That's definitely focus. Just focus. Uh, I, I think he's just uh, uh, got great hands, yeah. and, uh, you know, focus definitely is part of it. I mean, it's just a matter of going out there and being great at your job, and that's what he does. You played for the University of Tennessee for four years, right? Yeah. And won the BCS championship in your senior year. How yeah. good is that? It was awesome. Yeah, it was the best thing that ever happened. Did, 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 where, where were you playing when you won it? We were in um, Arizona. Ar Arizona? Yeah. Uh, what, 100,000 fans maybe? Yeah, probably right around there. Yeah, it was nice. You're just a kid. What's it like playing in front of 100,000 people for the BCS championship? Oh, it was unbelievable, to tell you the truth. It was something that, you know, that's, that's what you strive for. That's what you go to college for whenever you're playing sports. You know, that's what you want to be in as a championship game. And, uh, it's the best thing. I mean, it's the best thing for us. It's the best thing that happened that whole year, especially throughout my years at Tennessee because the first three years, we probably should have won a national championship with Peyton at quarterback. Right. 
and we couldn't win it. Yeah. You know, uh, we kept falling one game short against Florida Gators every year, so uh, sure. it felt good to finally make it there. You 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 were a quarterback, and and you backed up Peyton Manning. Yeah. Um, were you aware of his greatness even at that point? I knew he was going to be great. Yeah. Actually, um, I'm a Tennessee. I was a Tennessee fan coming into college anyway, because I was right from down the street, a small town called Harriman, and um, I seen Peyton come in the game actually after um, someone got hurt, I forgot, somebody got hurt and Peyton came in as a freshman. And I knew that uh, he was gonna be a guy that was gonna be the future star at Tennessee and all of a sudden I was just like, this could be a guy that I can go and sit behind and learn from, you know, and um, whenever I came up there, that's exactly what I did. Is he about 6'4", six, 6'5"? Six, yeah, he's about 6'5". Like, I, I'm wondering, I'm looking at quarterbacks in the NFL, at least, and I'm thinking, they won't even look at you now unless you're about 6'3 or 6'4", right? <laughs> yeah, in the NFL? Oh, yeah, yeah. in the NFL. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Like, some of the shorter quarterbacks, like um, um, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, uh, Mike? <laughs> Mike Vick. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's just about 6'1", six, 6'2", six, right? 6'2 and a half. And, and he, six, six. he has a lot of his passes batted down by these linemen who are themselves 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and and 500 pounds. Yeah, I mean, definitely. But he just runs around them and maybe the MVP. But yeah. tell me, uh, you played for Dallas. You also played for the Titans. Now you're playing for the Argonauts. You played for Calgary. Uh, who else did you play for? Montreal. Montreal, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, compare the two games for me, the, the, the NFL and the CFL. I think uh, overall the CFL gains faster. Right. Um, playing in the NFL for three years, actually, I... I like the CFL game more, especially as a receiver yeah. anyway, just because the game's a lot faster with three downs. Mm. You know, you've got a chance in the last three minutes to be down 14 points and come back and win a game. Yeah. In the NFL, that's not going to happen. No. You know, so uh, I love a lot of the changes. I love the whole part of uh, having to bring the ball out in the end zone instead of giving up a point. Right. You know, uh, if you look in the league, I mean, that's pretty much once it bounces in the end zone, it's over with. So. Uh, I, I kind of like the CFL game a little bit more. You know, I probably could be biased just because I've been up here for 11 seasons, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely find the game up here is a lot more faster and a lot funner, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, there's always the what-if comparisons. You know, what if you had uh, the, the best of the CFL play, uh, you know, an NFL team? Uh, would size be the issue? I think on the front line, yeah, the size would be the issue. Uh, actually, you know, you got some you got some big guys down there but the thing that the CFL would have over the guys in the NFL is the speed off the end right. because you know guys are a lot smaller and yeah. a lot faster um, so the speed off the edge would be uh, in our favor the linebackers are still headhunters I think uh, the linebackers in the states are a little bit bigger yeah. you know but the linebackers up here are a little bit faster so um, I think overall you're going to have faster DBs, maybe a couple faster receivers, but it would be a competitive game if you went best You know, about best. Uh, maybe 12, 13 years ago, maybe longer, I remember there was uh, one, a one-off, a flag football g a game between some uh, NFL All-Stars and some CFL All-Stars. Uh, it was called Sky Dome at that time. Mm. And the uh, CFL guys won because you, you, you factor out the weight thing mm -hmm. and exactly what you're talking about, you got the speed thing. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and I think the NFL guys were more than a touch embarrassed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they were. <laughs> um, now let's, 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 talk about, uh, let's talk about the CFL. Um, uh, Montreal, are, 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 are they gonna be a dynasty, do you think? They're definitely leaning toward it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they've, had, they've had a great run. I mean, if you really think about it, I can even say when I first got here, 2002, when we won the Great Cup, my first year in Montreal, actually, um, they've been the beast of the East mm. ever since, yeah. you know? So somebody's got to knock them off that throne. And I, I'm an Argo now, so I'm on the East Coast, so I'm starting to think we've got to be the ones to do it, you know? But they definitely have put together a, a nice trend of teams year after year, at least since 2002. How great is Anthony Calvillo? AC to me is the best quarterback in this league without question and I, I don't, stutter st don't stutter saying that at all because I think he, without him, Montreal is nowhere near who they'd be now. Mm. You know?